continue parasites. Okay, we're getting down to the end. They've been around since dinosaurs. So we've established we can't get rid of them. I've showed you how they go in a life cycle so that we can see a lot of places we can attack these parasites, especially when they get really active. Okay, if you clean mom of these parasites and she doesn't give them to the puppies, we don't have to, we don't have to deworm those puppies so much. But we actually come on that. We didn't plan on that when we started doing this, but people started doing it. It worked very well. We just don't deworm them until they're six weeks of age. So the bits, we do them three days in a row after day 50 gestation. You should be doing some kind of clock city of preventative on them. I've got my preference. I went full circle from the latest to day clock to all the way around and back to the coxie guard again. So we do some kind of clock city of prevention on mom so she doesn't give so many of the puppies. We deworm her three days in a row after day 50 gestation. Why day 50? Stress hormones go up. That's when these parasites get really active. That's when we can easiest kill them. So we don't deworm whole kennels at all. We just do the female when she comes up the well. And we do males twice a year, and any other time I want to get rid of dewormer, the male gets it. You know, poor males never like to see me come around. Um, but if mom's parasite free, we couldn't get them. So we say we give Ben Benazol three days in a row. We control round hooks and whips. We roll up help with tapes, too. And then we control Giardia. And then mom's on a coccidia prevention program. So she doesn't pass Giardia to the puppies. We didn't plan on that, but it ended up being the case. After we're on the program about a year, people started reporting Giardia is easier to handle. So, and then Coxidia, then the puppies get off to a good start. They grow fast. So that's what we're really after. Grow them, keep them growing. Why Ben Benazol? It's labeled for pregnant females. Pyrans are not, but they do, they do work fine. I have some people who are using Pyrans, some in between, and that's okay too. But remember, you're only going to get rounds and hooks. You've got to do something for Giardia. You've got to do something for Coxidia, so for the pyrene. Okay? And I would recommend if you're doing a pregnant bitch, you do at least two days if you're going to do pyrene. Because you want to clear them. They're getting very active there. We don't want to run around. We don't want to run out of pyrene before we run out of parasites. Too many things in there. So, that's what I do. Fimbentol, Drontel Plus. I get this call a lot lately. I've got Drontel Plus. I haven't been able to figure out how that pays. How does Drontel work? Fenbentol, it's in Drontel, is split in the liver in half and forms two Fenbendazoles, which is the same thing as Safeguard, and then gets put from the liver back in the gut. That's how come it works. So to me, it's a very expensive way to buy Fenbendazole. And so I, I just go straight to Fenbendazole. But it does work. You can do it. So we are seeing some resistance, but Pyran, don't, don't let me kill Pyran. We need Pyran. There's no new wormers on the market. Albendazole. Does anybody use albendazole? Albend, the balbazin, the good. Usually I get there and there's three or four people using it. It will occasionally kill a dog. And you don't turn them around. It wipes the liver out. So if you call the university, they'll say, do not use albendazole. And the reason they won't even give you a dose for it is because when they react to albendazole, they're dead. You can't turn them. It just kills them. I've had two bitches I've had to post their liver just like jello. And it doesn't happen often. You know, in fact, it's fairly rare. But when it does happen, I, don't, I, I just don't want to chance it. So here's what the CDC puts out, the FDA-approved drug. You should do one at two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. That's a lot of work for those of you doing it can identify. And if we take care of mom, while these puppies are nursing, they're getting parasites from mom, but we should not have to do that. And what we do is we start at six weeks. And we've got, when we're on this program for a year, my kennels deworm three days in a row with them, then it's all six weeks when they ship the puppy. When are they stressed? It's not in your place. Yeah, yeah, but weaning is tough on anybody. You know, but, you know, all puppies get a little stressed there. But it's not there where the brothers and sisters are. When you ship them and some little guy is chasing, pulling his tail that he doesn't understand, and he doesn't get to sleep, and he changes his diet, and he's got to ride in the purse, that's what's stressful. Yeah. So it's, so what we need to do is make sure we ask on that other end, that they do thin bend is all again, because if they're going to break with GRD, it's going to be under stress. So we took care of that. And then we usually use Marquee to help us with the clock city. She does her puppies in five weeks. And, and here's where I would say, if it's working for especially a large breed, they mean her in. We should not vaccinate large breeds the way we do tiny breeds. We shouldn't deworm them exactly the same. 
So on the larger breeds, you always do one more breed. So five weeks is fine. But you have to give one. You know what I really hate is when you ask somebody for advice and they say 15 to 45 pounds. You know, is it 15 pounds? One, two, you know, or 45. Pounds. I hate that. So if I would choose one, I'd choose six weeks because that's the way that most of us are finished. You know, weaning, things are getting set up. Two weeks to ship, and then we require them again when they hit the way. Now, why do you want to do that? Require that the veterinarian vaccinate. You know, put it right in there. He needs a five-way vaccine, and he needs to be deworn with Panicare three days in a row. Why do you do that? Because that veterinarian's insurance says he has to do it. If you vaccinate and ship the dog, his insurance says you vaccinate anyway. You can't trust him. Now, I know you guys are all really good at vaccinating. I figured out vaccination is like the third day out of med school. It's not that tough. So, you guys do an excellent job of that. But you realize his insurance says he has to, so use it. Don't vaccinate right before he ships. Have him do it. And ask him to do it, and he'll be happy with you. Who do you please when you sell a puppy? People always say, well, I please the guy buying the puppy. No, he wouldn't have bought the puppy if he wasn't happy with the puppy. You, if you please the veterinarian and he can't find round hooks and nipworms, and he can't find carbo or giardia, you're a good breeder. I don't care what your facility looks like. That's all they need to measure by. So we got to please that veterinarian on the other hand. We'll get on through these and we'll go, what about uh, panicure? We haven't seen resistance, so we thought it we had, every case we thought we had resistance, you usually end up So I realized that we judge most of our puppies like we do ourselves, just a little lighter than they actually are. So if there's any questions, weigh a few of them. Make sure you know what they weigh. Most are good about that. 